Hey, Henry. I don't know. Hopefully it started recording. Mm, okay, looks like it did. All right, I'm doing this video to help you um, with the new poem. Um, we are starting to um, read a new poet, Carl Sandburg. And the first poem that we are reading of his is Fog. Okay, this is pretty... Um, if you've looked at it, you'll notice it's it's pretty short. The poem is short. The work is short. So hopefully um, it won't take you too long, okay? Um, starting in your uh, study guide, don't forget to go over the pre-grammar question and give me what you think, okay? Um, uh, again, remember that these are your opinions. It's it, They're your thoughts. So short of just completely not answering it, there's really no wrong answer, okay? Um, you only have one reading note, which hopefully you went over that yesterday. It gives you a little bit of information about the poet, Carl Sandburg. Um, and then you only had one word to define, so I think that that made it pretty easy, right? So I wanted to begin by reading the poem, okay? And this is Fog. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. So what I want us to get from this poem is that this poem is a, what we call an extended metaphor, okay? Um, and it's a metaphor because the fog is being compared to a cat, okay? Um, much like a cat will kind of sit on its haunches and look over its surrounding, um, the fog is doing the same thing over the city, okay? It's kind of um, looking over the city before it moves on. All right, and that's really all that there is to this poem. Um, if you are, which I think today, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think today I had down for you to do the comprehension question. Um, there's only one, and it says, Sandberg's use of figurative langu language creates vivid imagery of the fog. So when we talk about imagery, we're just talking kind of about that like picture that we see in our head um, because of the words that the poet or the author has used. And so it says, describe the image of the fog and its setting that you picture in your mind. So either as you read the poem or maybe as you listened to me read it, um, I want you to picture what that might look like in your mind, okay? And, you know, what might the fog look like as it's kind of hovering and looking out over the city? And I want you basically just to write down what you see, okay? So describe to me for the comprehension question what you are visualizing, all right, in the poem. The logic question, I think I went over number one in my little synopsis of the poem. Um, so if you need to go back and, and look at that. And number two just says, did Sandberg's use of figurative language help you see fog in a new way? Now, remember when he talks about figurative language, we're talking about um, like metaphors, similes, personification, those sorts of things, okay? And um, remember, I just talked that this poem is a metaphor, okay? It is a metaphor comparing the fog to the cat. So did that metaphor did that use of figurative language um help you to see fog in a new way okay i'm sure you've experienced fog maybe you've never thought too much about it but did that kind of bring fog into a night a new light for you okay um yes tell me how maybe you've never thought of it as a cat before maybe nah maybe not that's okay this is kind of a, a your opinion sort of a thing, so I will take whatever you truly think. Then it says, think of one other way that you could figuratively speak about fog. And so what they're asking here is, what else could you compare fog to, okay? And so, again, I'm kind of giving you freedom here because I don't want you to be pigeonholed into like one specific answer. I want you to think about what else fog could possibly um, be compared to. You know, I want us to think about the, what we do know about fog, okay? It kind of, the way that it kind of rolls in, it kind of creeps in, um, you know, it kind of moves slowly. So as you think of all of 
you know, usually pretty low to the ground. So as you think about all of those things, what else do you think it could be compared to? I am not looking for one specific thing. I'm just looking for what you think. Okay. And then um, the last thing I have you do is the rhetoric question number one on page 144. And in a because this is so short, give me like one sentence summarizing the poem, okay? Um, that's it, this one was pretty short. Um, I'm gonna double check my notes because I think next week I have us doing the next one, which is Chicago. It's a little bit longer, um, still not outrageous, and I will do a video either later this week to be ready for next week, or I may not be able to get to it until um, next week, but I will do another video to kind of help you with Chicago. If you still need help on fog, please let me know. Uh, you can text me, call me. Um, if you need an, any help with any of the um, English stuff, please let me know, okay? You're doing a great job. Um, I know this is tough. I know it's not easy. This is not easy for anyone. Believe me, <laughs> um, I very much wish at this point that we were back in school. Um, but you're doing great and I am very proud of you and I know that it's not fun, it's not easy and the weather's getting so nice and it's just really hard to sit and do the work. But hopefully um, this week and next week you'll see a little bit of tapering off. Hopefully there's a little bit of relief. Hopefully it's not quite as much as it's been. Um, I want to know if you're struggling with the English, getting some of those writing assignments written. Um, I can always push them back to next week, okay? So anyway, I hope you have a good week. I hope this helped. Take care and I will see you soon.